Welcome to Let Love, a podcast with the Sisters of Life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Howdy, sister. Howdy, sister. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sister Annie's Day. And this, this is your very test. And we're happy to be back here. Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life. And today we're going to talk about um, how to let love be your home. Wow. That's yeah. That's awesome. I love, thinking, I love thinking about home. I love thinking about my experience as a kid at home at my friends' houses. Mm. It's a neat, uh, neat thing to think about. Yeah, it's it well, and I think it's a great thing to get us started, actually, sister. Yeah, um, yeah. Home. What what comes up in your mind? What did you love about home? I loved about home. You know, I loved my my dad is actually a stay at home dad, mm-hmm. so that was fun. But I I remember him pushing the we had like a big hairy broom that was <laughs> like a sweet not like a normal broom but one that you push, mm-hmm. and that was just like the the broom, and that that was just a sense of home, and he swept it. You know, a couple times every day, swept the house. And it was just very, it like, made me feel just like, ah, like <laughs> all, all is right with the world, you know? Because you have the broom. Right. <laughs> Old, reliable broom. Yeah. And it Always was, there for your broom. Yeah, and, like, Dad would make sure it was, you used it, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> but I love, I also love, like, the Saskatoon bushes. I probably don't know, Saskatoon berries are specific to my region in okay, Canada. Okay, okay. But those, uh, you know the couch you just like have long naps on mm. and the other siblings would kind of like pummel you a little bit to like get off <laughs> <laughs> yeah That's... sunshine through the windows Oof. what about you sounds wonderful I think wow what made home home you know I loved kind of coming into the house you know after school or uh, drag practice and you know the smell of dinner hitting mm. you in the face and mom's there either washing dishes or cooking at the stove again that presence of love Mm -hmm. and preparation Mm -hmm. that is preparing a place for you Mm -hmm. um you know you had your spot at the dinner table yes and no one messed with your spot no and that was your spot yeah um you know it gave me a certain sense of security early on in my life yes Uh, or even you know my grandmother's house she lived down the road and she always uh, prepared the table so beautifully. You felt so welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the the ways that she folded the laundry, how beautifully um, and clean that she kept the home. It mm-hmm. just it just surrounded you with a sense of love mm-hmm. and um, hospitality. And you just felt reverenced, yeah. you know, being there. Yeah. Um, or at my friend's house, you know. Again, there's, I think there's, I love, What I love about homes is there's commonalities and unique elements to to each and every home. Yeah, uh, that blesses it. Yeah, and and it's like no matter what, there's something about home that's like I belong there, and it belongs to me in a way. Mm -hmm. There's a a place. um, This is where I am, actually, and I know I can return to and be held by. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and it reminds me, sister, that as Christians. Mm The reality, the certainty that we have is that we have a home. Yeah. We have a home and that love is, in fact, our home. Yeah. I love it, sister. I cannot wait to unpack this because it's a desire we all have. We, we want to be home. It's a desire. It's a need. Yeah. And it's a, it's a reality that is both within us mm-hmm. and with us. Mm-hmm. And is, it is what we tend towards. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to unpack that. Amen. Amen. Shall we start with a prayer? Let's start with a prayer. Do you want to start? Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we ask that you draw us uh, into your heart, into your eternal love for us, into your provident care, and the rest uh, that we find in your heart. Uh, We ask in a special way for every grace to trust you as your beloved sons and daughters to yield uh, to your initiative of love, to your desire for us to rest um, with you in your heart, in your love, in your protection. Um, And we ask in a special way, Jesus, that you just share your own uh, filial receptivity, your own attitudes and dispositions that we might rest as you do uh, in the bosom of the Father. Blessed Mother, help us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Grace, pray for us. Amen. Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So let love be your home. Mm. And I loved what you were talking about, Sister, that we desire a home base. We need a kind of that place to call home. Yeah. Um, it's intrinsic within all our hearts. We, we all have that. We want that desire for stability, somewhere I belong, mm-hmm. somewhere I, I'm never afraid to go to, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and to be honest, we have to admit, like, sometimes people's experience of home is not great. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I actually don't want to go home. I don't want to be there, yeah. you know. But there's even in that, there's a sense of, like, there's, there's something in my heart that knows there's something better than this that something more than this is possible, you know? Um, and and I, I like to think, too, like, God doesn't, he, he's not a tease, you know? Mm. Like, he puts that desire for home, for that stability, that place of belonging. He puts it on our heart for a reason, mm-hmm. because he wants to give it to us, and because he's actually giving it to us now. Now. Yeah. Well, I love that, sister, that regardless of what our experience is, mm-hmm. uh, regardless of where we are right now in this moment, mm-hmm. and we might feel exiled from ourselves in every other place, every corner of the world. And yet Mm -hmm. the promise that the father holds out to us uh, is that, yeah, we have a home that Mm -hmm. we can claim right now. Mm -hmm. Um, One that he's placed uh, in our hearts through our baptism. One that he has, in a sense, united us to, Mm -hmm. his son, Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. and the love, Mm -hmm. uh, the reality of that love, and that we're tending towards as we throw the anchor of our life uh, into his promise, into the, the promises of the Father, uh, we are drawn into his heart, mm-hmm. which is ultimately um, our final uh, home yep. for all eternity. Yeah. Praise God. It's awesome. But I think, gosh, uh, let's start. I, I hear three things here, in a sense. The the home within us, mm-hmm. the home of love. Um, you know, being a home for others. Isn't that true? I think we can do Yeah provide that gift for those um, who are on this pilgrim journey with us. It's true. And I think we've all experienced that. Being in someone's presence, it's like, wow, mm-hmm. I'm, in, I'm in, at home in their presence. Amen. Amen. And then our eternal home, mm-hmm. the Father's heart. Mm-hmm. So uh, ourselves, where do we find this home? Where do we find love mm. uh, rooted, planted, established within ourselves? Well, sister, it actually makes me think right away of a great saint who was not too long ago canonized, St. Elizabeth of the Trinity. Mm. And her whole thing, like every saint kind of has their thing. Their thing. You know, (laughs) and uh, (laughs) like St. Francis, like the poor, Mm -hmm. you know, St. Dominic preaching, et cetera, et cetera. St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, who was a Carmelite, who uh, came a little bit after St. Therese Mm -hmm. um, in terms of history. (laughs) But her whole thing was the indwelling of the Trinity. But actually... Her, there's a great prayer she has where she speaks about this. And I'd love, I'm sure you have thoughts on this too, but she actually holds out to us that our home is living within our heart because the Trinity is within our heart and we can rest in that place with him. That is so powerful, sister. Mm-hmm. I, and I actually hear her coming onto the stage more and more and more. I actually think mm-hmm. she's a saint of our times mm-hmm. um, and kind of in a time and culture that, there's so many things that can draw us outside of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we live um, from different places outside of ourselves. What actually the Lord is drawing us to and what St. Elizabeth of the Trinity basically teaches us in and through her own life. And what she discovered is living from the heart of our hearts, yeah. living from um, that place you speak of where the Trinity actually dwells in us and came to dwell in us, in our hearts, at the moment of our baptism. Yeah. Well, and I want to break this open, and I know I mentioned it, sister, mm-hmm. but it's it's my favorite section of the catechism, and honestly, it cannot be underestimated in its power, and uh, it will help you if you tap into it. <laughs> so, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Well, here it is, number 2563. And it tells us about this place within ourselves. Um, the heart, Mm -hmm. the sacred place within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says, that the heart is the dwelling place where I am. Wow. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. It continues, the heart is the place to which I withdraw 
I think we're all aware of this place. Yeah. It says the heart is our hidden center beyond the grasp of our reason and of others. Wow. So you see how interior it is? It's, and it's so intimate. It's so, so personal. Mm, mm. Yeah, it can't really, it's a place that it's like untouchable in a sense. Amen. Yeah. And yet, uh, so thirsty. Yeah. So in need of being attended to. Yes. Um, and it, and it goes on to say, only the Spirit of God can fathom the human heart and know it fully. Mm. Isn't that reassuring? It's so reassuring because so <laughs> often my heart is a mystery to me. I mean, maybe yours is to you. Yeah. And it's like... Definitely. And it's like, I want to dwell out of it. But Jesus, like, explain what's happening here. Amen. Because it's, it's, yeah, there's a Amen. lot going on. Or even, too, I think, I know we're digressing, but it's like, sometimes I can put... You know, okay, somebody, you know, my friends, my my good sisters around me, like, you desire to be known mm. and loved and seen in the depths of who you are. Mm. And we can do that for each other to an extent. And yet, I love the catechism, what it provides for us here, that God alone, yeah. God alone can can actually satisfy that. Yeah. You know, we've got this God-shaped hole in our hearts, um, and He knows it fully. And as we go to Him, mm -hmm. uh, we can come to know it more fully. Mm -hmm. um, so here we are, the heart. But it continues. It goes. It tells us even more that the heart is the place of decision. Uh, it's the place of truth. It's the place of encounter. Mm. Okay? Because as image of God, we live in relation. And it says, ultimately, it is the place of covenant. Wow. And covenant is this incredible gift, this bond that God has established between him and us, mm. you and him. The reality that, and it's not a contract. This mm -hmm. isn't a superficial contract. This is an eternal kind of love covenant. It's, a, it's real. It's real. And it's this, I mean, even as you're describing this place of, of encounter and relationship and love mm -hmm. and truth, and it's like, gosh, I want to live out of that. Hmm. But how often do we live in exile from our own hearts, you know? And I'd love to know, I love your thoughts, sister. Like, how, how do we engage this, enter into this, mm -hmm. and not live on this um, surface level of ourselves, mm -hmm. um, which is sometimes because we're afraid, actually, of going deep, mm -hmm. you know, or we're afraid of what other God might think, what others might think, but how do we live uh, live this? Love from the heart. Uh, it's a great question, sister, mm -hmm. and I think it's uh, a lifelong work and journey. Um, I think it's acknowledging the other places we can live from, um, or even, I know actually in our last episode we mentioned um, you know, an Eastern monk. Well, here's another one. His mm -hmm. name is Archimandrite. And he noted this. He said, The great tragedy of our times lies in the fact that we live, speak, think, and even pray to God outside of our heart, mm. outside our Father's house. And truly, our Father's house is our heart. Mm. Uh, he's acknowledging this. He says, The place where the Spirit of glory and of God would find repose, that Christ may be formed in us. And in a sense, I think, to answer your question, mm -hmm. I think the first thing to being able to live from your heart more deeply and consistently is noticing what where do I habitually live from? Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of places we can live from. Sister, it's so true. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Right? Even like, I mean, I know like a, even a biological level. Mm -hmm. I can live on the surface level of I'm hungry, I'm tired, <laughs> my feet hurt, <laughs> you know, and I want a cold glass of water. Amen. You know, and that can drive me. Mm -hmm. Just to fill my my biological needs. And, Perfect. And I can never go deeper than that. Amen. It's easy. Well, know? that's a great place to start. And yeah. and again, an authentic place of need and desire. Mm -hmm. And yet, if we live solely from there, mm -hmm. um, it's not enough. Right. It's not enough. Right. Or okay, another place is relations. Um, um, are the relational side of our humanity, which is deep and broad and wonderful, actually. Mm -hmm. But if this is our place of habitual focus, like all the time, mm -hmm. um, then we can actually, uh, we can get distracted. Or in a sense, again, we're going to hit a pothole. Um, you know, if we're sunk in a world of texting or of gossip or of um, being overly concerned about what others are saying or doing, mm -hmm. right? Social media. Mm -hmm. we, we can get into this black hole. Right, it really is. And you can, and to be so focused on, 
on trying to fill myself with the relationships mm-hmm. of others, mm-hmm. it actually it can actually lead to an experience of resentment mm-hmm. because it's like you, you kind of come to that point. It's like they can't fill me. Mm-hmm. They can't fill me. And then you start resenting it. And it's it's actually like it's actually like Jesus waving his arms like, hey, Amen. Exa- exactly. It's the point. So it doesn't satisfy. It doesn't satisfy. A good thing when it's held in in order and in, right. in, in proper perspective. Right. I think another big place we can live from is um, our minds, mm-hmm. um, our world of ideas, you know, news, my thoughts, another's thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, we can kind of become mad little scientists mm-hmm. inside, <laughs> you know, um, thinking, thinking about everything, thinking about something all the time. And while thinking is very good, mm-hmm. again, ultimately, if we're living from there, mm-hmm. it's not going to satisfy that. Um, we're not at home, ultimately, in any of these places. No. Um, we're made in God's image, okay? In a sense, the, the heart is our home. Right. And we can't build our, our places. We can't build our homes in these. Like, I mean, I'm thinking of, mm. there's that great parable that Jesus mm. tells, you know, um, the wise man who built his house upon a rock, and the rains fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded upon a rock, you know, but... But then, in contrast, the foolish man who built his house upon sand, and the rains came, and the floods came, and the winds came, and it fell, and mm-hmm. the ruin of that house was great. And, you know, and building ourselves upon our houses, our homes, upon these things of biological needs or social needs or even the, my own thoughts, it's like sand. Mm-hmm. It's, it, cannot stand, it cannot stand the weight of glory. It mm-hmm. cannot stand what our hearts are made for and long for. Mm-hmm. Um, and we need, actually, to enter into eternal, infinite, divine love in order to find our true home. Amen. Yeah. Sister, it's so powerful. Yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, um, it's there for us. Mm -hmm. And this is the unbelievable part that it's, there's this indwelling. Mm -hmm. Um, And as I pull into the heart, I pull into that place of covenant. Mm -hmm. I pull into that place where my baptismal grace and the waters of my baptism, Mm -hmm. I can be washed in those graces anew. I can be um, enter into communion with God. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is what St. Elizabeth of the Trinity teaches us. This yeah. is what the history of the life of prayer yeah. um, in our church teaches us. Totally. And, and, and like I know we've said it many times in our episodes, but, but how do we get here? I mean, one is silence, stillness, and solitude Amen. to really enter that place of the heart. And it's, it's actually irreplaceable because if, you're, if we're living in noise constantly, mm-hmm. we'll never be able to, to even recognize or acknowledge my heart Mm -hmm. you know so just Mm -hmm. um yeah it's just the importance of that powerful Mm -hmm. so this is okay let love be your home Mm -hmm. love is in you Mm -hmm. and as we repose it's almost like pulling into a recliner (laughs) getting into a recliner in your heart pulling that little lever and tucking back Mm -hmm. uh hammock spirituality resting in that place with god being still within yourself Mm -hmm. and it is initially scary Mm -hmm. (laughs) But uh, talk to Jesus about that. Yeah. Let him lead you yeah. um, into, hey, Jesus, show me. Yeah. Bring me to the heart of, of who I am in you and you in me. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's true. Let and love be your home. I love that, sister. And I have a, I mean, it's kind of leads me to a question. Like, what does that look like? Like someone who lives this, what does that look like? Which actually kind of leads also to our second point. Hmm. You know, but someone who, who um, has made love their home. And is living in that no matter what circumstance, Mm -hmm. no matter what difficulty in relationship. Um, And and I'm sure you know people in your life like this, but it's it's someone, you know, and I can think of people who have come into their presence and it's the experience of peace. Mm. And that I I feel like I am home in their presence. I don't need to prove myself. I don't need, I'm not trying to get anywhere. I'm not trying to say the right thing. It's I can... Be. I'm completely received mm-hmm. in their presence. And why? Because they have let themselves be at home in their hearts, in the love of God. Wow. Um, and it radiates. You know, there's a great quote from St. Seraphim, a soul at peace will save a thousand souls. Mm. It literally radiates. And I think, I mean, we see this in John Paul II. We see it in Mother Teresa, the great saints. Um, but even the people of our own life, like my grandma, yeah. you know, I just, I just want to be with her. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, again, you've you've brought us beautifully into our second point. In a sense, 
how we can, um, as we are letting love be our home Mm -hmm. um, within our own hearts, Mm -hmm. we can become incredible gifts to others. Mm -hmm. Um, And in a sense, this is the great catch of Christianity. People notice Christians who are living um, in the love that they're being given and accessing that love Mm -hmm. that they have um, through their baptisms, through a relationship with God, Mm -hmm. that they become a home for others, a place of refuge, a harbor where others can pull into and take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Um, they're people who are so secure within their own hearts that they can approach the person before them, Mm -hmm. trusting, knowing that they are made in the image and likeness of God. They are wonders Mm -hmm. and um, without presumption can receive this person without the spirit of utility Mm -hmm. or of trying to run over someone to get to the next thing. But they are going to stop Mm -hmm. and receive Mm -hmm. uh, the gift of the person before them. And wow, when we experience this, when we receive this gift, I mean, it's amazing. It's probably one of the greatest i would say on this side of heaven it is when and someone it, really receives you it really is yeah and you feel and there's also there's also like a safety to it like as home is home is a safe place we mm-hmm. know we're, we're safe home and there's something about the person who can receive you deeply mm. and there's a safety in being received deeply you know it's really powerful well it's it, the power too of being drawn out of your places of exile mm-hmm. right like mm-hmm. i i know Gosh, we can live with these tapes playing in our heads that I'm alone, I'm outside, mm-hmm. I am, I am apart. Um, mm-hmm. No one loves me. No one desires to be with me. Mm-hmm. And when you can rest in the presence of another receiving mm-hmm. you, it's like all of those literally vanish, mm-hmm. like in a snap. Mm-hmm. They melt away mm-hmm. as you are simply being received, and that we can do that for each other. Yeah, and it is inestimable in its value and its gift it really is Mm -hmm. it really is Mm -hmm. and we all i mean like we said we all want that um and we we want actually we we all want to be with others you know whether we're extrovert or introvert Mm -hmm. however you (laughs) categorize yourself we want to be with others to receive and to be received like you're saying and it it makes me think of one story Uh, one of our sisters met a a gentleman on the plane Mm. and he uh just sitting beside him and he shared this uh, this story of he had was just coming back from visiting his kids and he was recently divorced and um, he had gone to visit his kids um, and he had asked his ex-wife you know can I just visit them at your house because just complications and he was kind of hard on life at the moment and didn't have a you know solidity so she said sure and she left for the day and he came to visit with his with his kids and uh, his four-year-old daughter started you know, he's there and she starts throwing a temper tantrum, hmm. just screaming, hitting the couch. I don't want you to visit. I don't want you to visit. I don't want you to visit. You know, and he's having like this. He's already down on life. He's so depressed. He's just has no speck of confidence in himself. And to hear his little four year old daughter screaming this, oh. I don't I don't want you to visit. I mean, it, sh- it shattered him. And he was just about to get up and call his ex-wife and say, come on home. I'm done. My visiting's done. When he felt this prompting in his heart, like, go sit beside your daughter. He said, okay. So he went on the couch where she's, you know, beating the couch in anger. And he sits beside his daughter on the couch and and he says, honey, why don't you want daddy to visit? And she turns and looks at him and she goes, because I want you to stay. I want you to stay and be with us forever. Hmm. You know, and isn't wow. this the isn't this the cry of our hearts, right? Yes. And actually, as you're speaking, when we can find someone who receives us, it's mm-hmm. like we want you to stay. I I want to be home here. Mm-hmm. I want this to be home. And home is never a place of being alone. Mm-hmm. We're never alone in a true home. We're with. Mm-hmm. And and as you're saying, to to be to be a home for others, and when we've experienced being received uh, by others, how powerful. It's so beautiful, and, sister. And irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. Yeah. Well, and it's, it strikes me, it's love. Mm-hmm. You know, home is mm-hmm. love, mm-hmm. authentic mm-hmm. for you, for your flourishing love. Mm-hmm. I remember, um, just to echo that, you know, when we kind of um, uh, moved away from our 
my childhood home and, and sold kind of our family homestead. Uh, it, it's a sorrow, you know, it's yeah. a tremendous sorrow. Uh, and yet, at the same time, it was so powerful to experience that at the end of the day, uh, home ultimately was the love that filled those walls. Wow. And that was something I could bring with me wow. and keep with me for eternity because love is eternal. Mm -hmm. Actually, once it's given, mm -hmm. it's eternal. It, it echoes eternally. Wow. Um, which brings us, I think, to our last point. Um, mm -hmm. The reality that we have a home to look forward to. We have someone waiting for us to arrive. Yes. And that is God the Father, and that place is his heart. Yeah. I mean, it's like Jesus says, you know, in the Gospel of John 14, in my Father's house there are many rooms. Mm. If, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? Like, he's preparing a place for us. He's prepared a place for us in the Father's house. What? It's crazy. It's crazy. And it's unique and special. Yeah. You know, it's kind of in the same way, like, you know, when you meet someone or you, you know, go to school with someone, um, when you encounter someone else, it creates a new place in your heart. Yeah. And in the same way, when God creates each of us, mm -hmm. it's almost like this new place is is created in his, his heart wow. and he can't wait for us to return he's waiting come back yeah the light's on um and uh yes for us to be aware of that to for us to live with that in our sight uh it kind of reminds me it's powerful actually it strengthens us for mm. this pilgrimage um because i think you don't have to walk too many days in life to say, you know, I'm not home. Like, right. <laughs> like this si oh. life on this side of the veil isn't, isn't cutting it. Well, you know what? It's not supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, yes, God has given us many things for us to rejoice in and to take delight in mm -hmm. and many goods. And yet all of them were just getting a taste ultimately mm -hmm. of, of the eternal life that uh, we are destined for with him that will satisfy. It's really true. It's it's like C.S. Lewis's book, The Great Divorce. Hmm. You know, he talks about, you know, when people get to heaven and everything is more real. Hmm. You know, the grass is harder and the trees are more, like everything is more real. And it's actually like, ah, oh, this is it. This is it. You know, this is the realness um, that we've been called to. Yeah. It's the realest thing there is. Yeah. And we have to keep it in our sight, I think. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I think Lord of the Rings, I know we quote it often. But can you quote it too much? I think <laughs> no. not. I think <laughs> not. Oh my goodness. Well, and even it, I think it's depicted so powerfully um, in the movies, but also in the book when Frodo and Sam are on the slopes of Mount Doom. Mm. I mean, they're at the end of this outrageous epic. They have n nearly no strength left. And... Um, Frodo is totally, like, passed out in exhaustion on the side of the mountain. And Sam, you know, kind of looks Frodo in the eye, and he's like, Frodo. He's like, do you remember the Shire? Mm -hmm. I mean, of all things to be asking your buddy, here we are at the end of all things, and you're asking about the Shire. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what's, what's up with this? Mm -hmm. But it was so powerful because as Sam was talking about the Shire, you know, the strawberries, the, the sights and the sounds and the smells of this of their homeland. Mm -hmm. um, Sam is filled with new strength mm -hmm. that he is able then to say, you know, Mr. Frodo, I can't carry the ring for you, but I can carry you. Wow. I mean, wow. Uh, again, loose quote, but so powerful mm -hmm. as Sam puts in front of himself, mm -hmm. his homeland, mm -hmm. he finds new strength mm -hmm. to to climb this mountain, to, mm. to finish this epic, to do his part in bringing, um, you know, Middle Earth to reconciliation. Saving the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? He saved Christmas. It's amazing. This is what we all want to do every day. This is, it's so powerful, remembering our home. Because mm -hmm. as Christians, it's like we, we're there, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. It's like that living, that indwelling, mm -hmm. and the promise and the reality and the nowness of it. But it's also like... But there's still, it's not yet. Amen. And so it's, it's this interesting kind of tension of our lives, of our hearts. But remember, keeping that home, um, our true end, our home in vision, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. It affects every decision we make. You know, it's like, what, what do I believe about my life? What I believe about my life affects what choices I make. You know, and, and if, I, if I really believe and have my eyes set on, yes, I have a home in heaven 
and is waiting for me. He's waiting for me. And that's what I'm made for. I'm going to, I'm going to live for that. You're going to live differently. I'm going to live differently. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to treat myself cheaply Mm -mm. actually, because he's not, he's not, he's, he has prepared a place for me, Mm -hmm. you know? I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And I think all the lies, you know, I don't know who I am. I'm exiled. I'm outside of love. Whatever the lies, mm-hmm. it's like they dissolve in an instant mm-hmm. when we live in the sight of that eternal home. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I have a father. I am a daughter. I am a son. Mm-hmm. I belong. Mm-hmm. Um, I have the grace to become. Yeah. Um, and I have a place. Yeah. Um, I have a place in my father's heart. And yeah. I'm going to walk towards it. Yeah. So, sister... Before we go. Before we go. I think uh, just to um, remember, I think I, my challenge is remembering um, maybe three things uh, of, your, of your home, your childhood home, that delighted your heart. Hmm. And, and, and remember that. Um, that could be, yeah, the, I don't know, drawing on the sidewalk with chalk or, or the smell of, mom's coffee or whatever but just things that that you remember from being home as a kid um yeah just a simple remembrance amen yeah beautiful yeah what about you i think uh this is a trick it's saved me a lot of miles of Mm -hmm. grief i think is to live the present moment in the light of eternity Mm. sounds really deep sister (laughs) Well, in a sense, to take whatever you might be looking at in the present moment or the crisis you might feel or the burden you might be carrying and hold it up to, um, yeah, eternity um, in the light of eternal love, Mm -hmm. in the light of the Father's love for you Mm -hmm. in this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And this love that is going to um, allow that love to gather that moment up mm. basically mm. it's really just letting love be your home i love that sister yeah take refuge in love amen can i add one more thing i'm gonna add one yeah. more thing <laughs> as a ps because i'm really inspired by that actually and um to recall someone in your life um whom you felt completely home with how beautiful you know and and ponder that person what was it about them you know, what qualities, how did you feel in their presence? And I just meditate on that, mm. you know? And even, even maybe thinking, like, how can I be that for someone in my life? You know, what did, that, what did that person do to my heart, you know? Love it, sister. Yeah. Wow. Well, can you close this down in a prayer? I would love to, sister. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for your blessings and your graces. Lord, you promise us that in your Father's house there are many rooms that you've prepared a place for us. Jesus, we ask you right now for a tenacious faith in this, that we belong to your house, that you love us, that you will never leave us alone, and that you are drawing us at every moment uh, into the home of your heart. We ask for the grace to live this, Jesus. We place all of our needs and intentions, all those whom we love, all those whom we're struggling with. We place them, Lord, into your heart and ask uh, for your grace. And we give you glory as we pray. Glory be to the Father, to to the the Son, and and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and ever shall be, world without end. end. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. God bless all of you. We're praying for you, and uh, we hope you're well. See you next time. This was Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life, a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.